Brothers and sisters, it's a great pleasure to be able to speak to you today on my part for several reasons. One of them being that usually when my wife speaks before me, I don't have any time left to speak. I recall one time back in the Pleasant Hill Ward when we were reporting conference and I was in the bishopric. My wife and I had been to general conference and uh, we got back and the bishop made the mistake of assigning her to speak before me but i was in charge of the meeting i was conducting it that day so as my wife got up and spoke about the marvels of sitting through uh, six sessions of conference and so forth the hour wore on and i i left the stand and i went right way to the back of the hall and uh, i i wear a pocket watch and i took my pocket watch off and i waved it on the chain like that to her up on the stand and I looked down into my horror uh, the 300 members of the congregation were looking at me instead of her <laughs> well when I woke up this morning and I was having my breakfast of, uh, of uh, a peanut butter sandwich on whole wheat bread and applesauce washed down with a glass of milk it seemed to me that there was something significant happening today, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And then I remembered that today was quarterly conference. And then during quarterly conference, I remembered that there must have been something else going on today, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. And when I got home from quarterly conference, I saw all these cookies there. And I thought that didn't look much like lunch to me. And then it dawned on me, something about one of my daughters leaving on a mission. And then it dawned on me that I was supposed to speak. And so on the way over here, I tore out a page of the New Testament, which happened to be the 10th chapter of Matthew. And I'd like to comment on the 10th chapter of Matthew in relation to being a health missionary not just being a health missionary but being a lady health missionary which is uh, entirely significant now you know one of the things that the 10th chapter of matthew does it's in, it's the injunction of the lord to his 12 apostles when he's sending them out to preach the gospel in the world and so he starts off and uh, he gives them a certain injunction which I'll save till last. And he mentions who, who all the and it mentions who all the apostles were and then it came upon a part that, that I thought was interesting. The scriptures state and the Lord is speaking provide neither gold nor silver nor brass in your purses nor script for your journey neither two coats neither shoes nor yet staves for the workman is worthy of his meat and i had thought that this was going to be an expense to me well i was excited to hear that margaret was going to go without gold or silver or brass in her purse but i suspect that they will be doing something along the line to help her although for the most part she is self-supporting in this effort but the apostles were enjoined to go forth. I think the idea being primarily not to be concerned with money because the Lord would provide that, but rather to be concerned with the spiritual things of the kingdom. Now Margaret being a health missionary is probably going to be working a large part of the time with members of the church. She'll be teaching them good health practices. She'll be working with them with their various health problems, illnesses, and so forth. And I notice with interest that the 10th chapter of Matthew and the Lord's injunction to the apostles says that they should enter into the homes of the worthy. And the Lord puts it this way, and into whatsoever city or town ye shall enter inquire who in it is worthy and there abide till ye go thence 
and when ye come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. An injunction which comes down to even modern times when the missionaries of the church go forth and take the peace of the Lord into the homes in which they enter. Now, you know, the first time I ever met Margaret in this life, uh, she only weighed five pounds, nine ounces, and I could hold her so her bottom was here and her head was here. She was that small. And she had flaming red hair, what there was of it. And it ran this away and that away. And I'm pleased to see that she has it more under control at this time. <laughs> One of the things, when Margaret Ann was 15 months old, her twin sisters were born. Margaret was born in Hawaii, but her twin sisters were born in California. And so we left Margaret with a, uh, some friends of ours while I took a high-speed run into the hospital because we just found out a few days before that we were to expect twins. And the doctor said, I don't care how long you have been in labor with your past children, twins come fast. And so we dropped Margaret Ann off at our friends the Kowalskis, and I took a high speed uh, 20 mile run into the Peralta Hospital in Oakland, and got there about 4 o'clock in the morning, and the twins were born on the afternoon of that day. I went back rejoicing. Uh, I always rejoice after something like that and uh, went to get Margaret. Now Margaret is a unique person, as Joanne has already mentioned, unique in many ways. Uh, she's aggressive in many ways and uh, was a very precocious child, leading her twin sisters down for a little walk on the freeway and other things like that. And one of the things that Margaret had done was as they were sitting around the table eating that morning, the Kowalskis had for some reason or other got up and walked away. And when they turned around, Margaret was walking around on top of the table. Now, ever since that time, she has had her foot in it, one way or the other. <laughs> now, we're supposed to put our hand in the hand of the Lord. And Margaret Ann uh, is putting her foot in the hand of the Lord, as well as her hand and all of her other talents. I know that when you fill a mission in the kingdom, that you run across times in a foreign country where you're far away and where fear can come upon you. Margaret has been one that's wanted to be close to home, and she sure as honk will not be close to home now. I hope she doesn't even phone us. Because <laughs> I've had that before while she was in Rexburg. 